in this session, we're going to be learning exactly about the core concepts of SEO, what exactly it is and what impact it can have on your business. And most importantly, how we can rank higher when customers are searching for what we sell. So just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Obviously, I think it's absolutely amazing. We've got everyone's cameras or uh, people's cameras on. Do feel free to keep your cameras on, but please do put your microphone on mute just so uh, we don't have any interference um, uh, when Fabio kind of is taking us through the session. If you have any questions at all at any point during the workshop, do not be afraid to use the chat box. I'll, we will be watching it. If we can um, answer a question then and there, then we, well, I say we, Fabio. If Fabio can answer a question <laughs> then and there, uh, then he will. If it's something where it requires longer explanation, we absolutely are going to get to it at the end. Um, so do not be shy at all. We've got plenty of time for Q&A. Um, so any any question that, that comes to mind, do make a note of it or stick it in the chat and we'll make sure that we get to it at the end. Um, anyone who's been to any of our workshops um, before know that we love Q&A um, and so any and every question absolutely needs to be asked. If you've got anything that even if it you feel like it's a silly question, I'm sure there's plenty other people in here that will want to be knowing the answer as well. So please, please, please do make the most of the session and the incredible experts that we have here today. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Fabio to introduce himself and Viaduct Generation. Yeah, um, should we should we put the presentation up, Kalia? Yeah, <clears throat> I will do that. Right, can everyone see? Yes. Perfect. There we go. All right, perfect. So good evening, everyone. Um, so as Kalia just said, my name is Fabio Mbalo. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Viadac Generation, uh, a mission-led SEO agency supporting the online growth of underrepresented founders and, and their allies. Um, I'm very excited about today's workshop, actually, uh, as we have actually been fans of Jami for a while. And I'm not saying this just to praise your ears, Kalia, um, because as, as a matter of fact, a quick, a quick anecdote. Um, when we came up with the idea of uh, Viaduct Generation and we were compiling a list of ideal future clients, Jami was actually one of the first names that came up. So, so I'm really proud to now uh, call you a partner and, and certainly excited to be doing this, this workshop alongside you. Um, so if we go to the next slide now. Yes, just before actually we move yeah. on, I'm just gonna put my camera, turn my camera off and put my thing on mute just so I also am not interrupting. Cool. Yeah, let's go straight to the agenda because we've got the speakers there. Yeah, let's go to the agenda, yeah. So, um today we'll go uh through what seo is and how it works uh, uh how under underrepresented businesses can benefit from it and then finally we'll just go over a couple case studies and and then open the floor to to some questions yeah um so whether you have been you have an e-commerce site or a site where you promote your services you must have wondered, um, how can I increase the traffic of my website? <clears throat> and as soon as you Google it, or you ask someone with experience, normally you get the answer of, oh, you need to improve uh, your SEO in your site. Um, but what does that really mean? Essentially, SEO stands for search engine optimization, or just how easy, easy it is for Google to find your website. Now, there are several different search engines out there. You have search engines like Bing, Yahoo, Baidu in China, or Yandex in Russia. However, 90% of searches are done on Google. So that's usually what we're talking about when we say search engines. And basically, search engines just go out and crawl or analyze the web to find pages and index them in their catalog. Indexing is essentially something very similar to when you have a, a book and at the end of the book you have an index where it tells you where everything was talked about and, and the location. So that's pretty much Google and their indexing system on the web and in the cloud. Um, so let's take a look at an example. Uh, let's go to the next slide, Kalia. Yeah, now this is a typical search page with results. You can see that these are ads. Um, and this is essentially a practice similar to SEO called uh, PPC or pay-per-click. And as the name suggests, uh, you essentially pay to rank 
uh, at the top. And every time someone clicks on your link, you pay Google for it. Now, the second image. Yeah, the second image is uh, what's known as a knowledge graph. And what it's doing is it's, it's pulling in a result that might be farther down on the page. But since Google thinks it's uh, answering the query really well, it will get shown up here, as well as down farther on the page. And then finally, on the third image, um, you have the organic results. Typically, there are about 10 organic results on one page. And organic listings simply mean that these results are unpaid at all, unlike PPC. Uh, they show up on Google because they've done a good job of telling Google that this page is about this particular query. Then you also have a people also ask area, and this simply shows the related searches that people uh, will do on this topic. Now, fewer than 10% of people will actually ever click on the next page. If they don't find what they're looking for on the, on the first page, they will simply just adjust their criteria and, um, and that's why Google added in this people also ask area. And here's the biggest why SEO is so important for your website. Uh, these top three organic results that you can see on the third image um, essentially get over 70% of all clicks. The first position usually gets between 35 to 40% of the clicks. The second will get between 15 to 20%. And then the third position will get around 10% of the clicks. So that's why it's so important to make sure that your website is first on Google. But how does Google even determine what should go on the first page? Uh, the biggest factor is relevancy. You essentially want to make sure that your website is exactly what the searcher is looking for when they're searching Google. Now, Google actually uses over 200 factors to determine what's relevant in their algorithms. And there's no way we're going to be able to cover all of them today. But if we can concentrate on a few, then we have a fighting chance to get seen in the search results. In addition to relevance, you also want to make sure that your site is useful. All that means is that when a user clicks on your site, um, the information that they're looking for is easily found. Think about the last time you did a search, OK? Um, if you went to a page that you thought had the answer, but you had to, you had a hard time finding finding it on the page, did you stick around? Probably not, right? So because most people will just click back and go look for a different answer. So just make sure that your site is useful and that you've arranged the answers for the topic in a meaningful way, so that it's easier for readers to find what they're looking, what they're actually looking for. Next slide. So there are two main ways to think. Uh, so there are two main ways that you can work on SEO on your website. These are called on-page SEO and off-page SEO. On-page SEO is simply telling Google and the reader that you have everything that they are looking for. You have all the indicators that they're looking for, and really this just means um, that you have all the right keywords on your site. Now, on-page SEO is easier to deal with because most of the changes needed are within your control. For instance, um, if your site was about, let's say, uh, barbecues, then you want to make sure that your site has the right keywords in the title, in the body, and then in the image descriptions. It also means that you have supporting keywords in it like um, uh, barbecue recipes, grill temperatures, types of meat, uh, best barbecue grills, and everything else that is related to that topic. Now, the best thing about it is that you already, if you already have a website with some articles on it, you may just be a few tweaks away from seeing massive results with your traffic. And by the way, that's even without writing any extra content. So if you want to see about that, just make sure you drop me a message um, after this, this workshop, and I'll, I'll be happy to analyze your site. Then. With off-page SEO, that simply means that you're making sure that other websites are linking back to you. These are called backlinks. Off-page SEO is a little bit more out of your control because you are relying on other people uh, to believe that your site is worthy of a link. But if you're, if you're writing great content and networking uh, with your industry or your topic area, then it really shouldn't be much of a problem. 
Now, I just want to let you know something, okay? As we go through this, uh, as we go through this SEO process, please, please, please just remember that search engine optimization does take time. And sometimes it can certainly be a little bit frustrating when you're not seeing the results as fast as, you, uh, as you'd like. But if done properly, the, the results uh, from your SEO efforts can last months or even years, depending on the industry you're in. So now that you know a little bit about um, what SEO is and, and how we can um, improve the traffic on your site, let's talk about how this marketing practice can help support the commercial growth of underrepresented businesses. Next slide, please. Oops, this shouldn't be here. Next slide. Yeah. Um, so SEO impacts visibility and a company's uh, bottom line. At Viaduct Generation, uh, we help underrepresented founders develop their online presence and as a result, their economic, uh, their economic prosperity. Um, with over 93% of online experiences beginning with a search engine, the practice of SEO isn't going anywhere and it's as relevant as, as, as ever. If you think about it, um, when the pandemic hit, everything turned digital overnight. No matter your business, your customers were looking for you online. And if you weren't on, and if you weren't on the top of the search results, they took their business elsewhere. Next slide, please. However, what does that mean for underrepresented founders? Well, as you can see from the start on the screen, black businesses, for example, have not been afforded the luxury of SEO and are forfeiting online visibility, market share, and commercial growth. Now, not to take it deep, okay, but you have to think that the practice of SEO has been used by privileged businesses in the West for the past 20 years. Some communities have clearly been benefiting from this for a long time, and what we're trying to do is ensuring that there is, a, there is more of a level playing field for everyone because essentially the online real estate has, has more than enough room for all of us, okay? Now let's go through the case studies. Next slide. Um, the first one is Legion of Vapors, okay? Uh, as the name probably tells you, they are a, uh, an e-commerce store that sell vapes, okay? When they joined us in April, 2021, uh, they had about 3,000 people going to their site on a monthly basis. As of today, and after months' work, uh, they have about 32,000 people going to their site on average on a monthly basis, and that has had an, uh, an impact of about 300% on their revenue. Now, if, if we stay here very quickly, you can see that they joined us in April, and they really didn't start seeing results all the way until July. However, this is where SEO can become a little bit tricky, right? Because those first normally on average six to seven months in this case it was quite a little bit faster you may want to to kill your seo agency and not trust them because you don't really get to see a lot of results but as i mentioned previously um it can be frustrating however with a little bit of patience and waiting for those six to nine months until the results start kicking in you will get to see the benefits of the practice next slide these guys, Fortnite SDW items, um, essentially what they do is they sell uh, Fortnite products online to, to be used in game. So as you can expect, uh, a lot of parents' credit cards are being used here. Um, however, when they joined us in March 2021, they only had about 200 people going to their site on a monthly basis. And as of today, they've got about 4,000 people going to their site on average on a monthly basis, okay? Now, next slides. Yes, Desres. Oops. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Um, Desres is a is a little bit of a different one. So they are not actually an e-commerce business. What they do is they have a, a they've created a software for estate agents. Okay. They've it's a company that have been going on for. I believe 19 years or so. However, as you can see on the screen, they changed their website. It used to be desres.com and they changed it to desres.co.uk, which is why you see it that you only started in pretty much towards the end of 2020. Um, and they they are a small run business out of Wales, okay? Essentially run out, uh, it's a family run business who are essentially competing in an industry with 
global giants out of the US. Okay. So when they came to us, they had a very limited budget for SEO. They didn't really believe in it. Um, uh, they, and, and they couldn't essentially afford to invest in SEO as much as some of their competitors. Okay. So when they started with us in January, they had on average about 900 people going to their site on a monthly basis. And as of today, they've got over 2000 people. I believe this graph is even old now. They've got about 3000 people now, uh, on average going to their site on a monthly basis. And they are actually competing with some global giants, two global giants in their industry that they identify as almost benchmarks uh, when they started their contract with us. But as of today, they, they're even beating them on a consistent basis. So this just goes to show that even if you have a limited budget, if you have the resources in house, it's and with an agency like ours, not, not trying to promote ourselves, but I'm sure there's other agencies like us out there as well. Um, and you put in the work, you can actually get to compete for those key positions, even if you think that you don't have the same budget as the biggest players in your industry. Now, that's pretty much it. I've got some key, uh, some key takeaways right at the end of, uh, right after this, I believe, Kalia, yes. So just some bullet points for you. I also, I've also prepared a document that I believe uh, Kalia will be sharing with you at the end of this uh, workshop with some free SEO tools that you'll be able to use um, to sort of help you kickstart your, your SEO journey. Um, however, as the four key takeaways from, from this presentation, think of SEO as a long-term strategy that may take a while to produce results. However, is certainly considered to be more sustainable than PPC. Take into account that the difference, uh, the difference between on-page SEO and off-page SEO um remember that over 93 percent of online experiences begin with a search engine so something like seo has to be key in your uh, marketing strategy for your businesses and then finally uh that there are different elements to seo okay there's technical seo content writing and then finally link building or as we call them in the presentation backlinks so I would like to open the floor to some questions. Uh, Kalia, you joining? Okay, you come in. I'm coming back, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I have a bunch of questions, but I just opened the chat and I see Jessica from Blanks and Jewelry has got one. Um, yep. I think it's a really good one. So we'll start with that. What type of budget would you suggest having for SEOs on a monthly basis? as a small business? It very much depends, right? It very much depends on the need. <laughs> I'm laughing because it depends, seems to be the most popular answer in the SEO industry. However, um, I would have to look at the site, understand how many pages the site has, uh, perhaps how many products, whether um, a lot of, in a lot of instances, the, the problem that a lot of sites have that come to us is that the first step is already it was already done incorrectly, which is building up the site, okay? Uh, because as I said, right at the end, technical SEO is very important. In technical SEO, essentially, is all about the, in, in short, how well the site is built and how well the site runs, okay? So if that's, if that's not done correctly, then we can't even get to content yet. We have to take care of that first. However, I would normally suggest starting on average in general, anywhere around 800 to a thousand pounds a month and that's the absolute minimum thank you shiana shiana says can you explain a little more about how images help your ranking absolutely that's a very good question um so images really help when it comes to e-commerce businesses okay because if you think about it as i mentioned there right at the start google essentially sends out their bots to analyze every web in the world, okay? So if you think about it, these bots, although they're very smart, they, they can't read images, right? I images is essentially just a picture. They can't look at the picture and say, oh yeah, I know that this, these are black air forces, for example, okay? Which is why these images need to have text to ensure that these bots, when they, they're reading the content on your page, they know exactly what's, in, in that page, what product you're trying to sell in that page so that you can get granted those 
um, uh, those those rankings essentially. Does that make sense? I think so. What what does that mean? So if I if I want to upload an image to my site of black yep. forces, how yep. will I tell Google that so, it's black air forces? So when you when you're in the back end uploading the image, for example, there's something called alt attributes, okay, or alt texts in some instances, okay. So there is it's literally a little box um, that all, all you have to do is within it, you just type in black air forces, um, and you can sometimes even put in the, the years exactly. I, I see it there. Oh, you, you just wrote it. <laughs> yeah. So alt text or alt attributes um, is essentially a little box right under the image, normally in the back end of your website. Where you just introduce exactly what the image is amazing peace wants to know how can we use blog posts to improve our seo that's a very good question as well so blog post essentially is, is almost like an an extra opportunity for you to really tackle those keywords that you want to be ranking for okay not only that it also allows you to come across as a thought leader in your industry because as i was saying uh, right at the end Another very important aspect in SEO is those backlinks, is getting those websites talking about you, right? So it's very important for you to perhaps come, come up with some blog topics that may be quite unique in your industry that you, you believe you're an expert in, share your expertise with, with your industry essentially, okay? So whenever someone is looking for some information to do with your products or your services or anything in general in, general in your industry, your website comes up with the answers because then people will start seeing you as a um, as a thought leader and as someone that truly understands what's going on in the industry. And then Google sees this as as something very valuable. They they see you as um, someone that truly understands what's going on, and you're getting recognition from those in your industry who are then linking to your site. Sabrina's asked a really interesting question, actually. So, so Sabrina runs um, a business called Partners, yep. but Google automatically corrects this to Pandas, which obviously will have issues with her SES. So what yep. can she do to combat this? Okay, I mean, very much, I would very much need to analyze the back end to see what the issue is happening. Um, it's, it's something I've never really heard of before, but I mean, I'm sure there's an answer if I was able to look at the Google Search Console um, or, and their back end as well. I'm sure I'd be able to, to, to identify the issue straight away. However, that certainly can, can have a direct negative impact in, in uh, their rankings um, because if, if your business is called Partners, Partners was it? Yeah. Partners. Oh yeah, and then they and Google is reading it as pandas, and you have nothing panda related on your site. Then certainly, um, you won't get the the traffic that you're looking for. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm certainly more than happy to to help out. I'm sure in the slides will we be emailing the slides, Kalia, after this? Yeah. Yes, so in the slides, in the slides, I have my perfect. So in the slides, I have my email right on the slides on the last slide. So please do send me an email, and I'm more than happy to to help out. I'll drop the email in here as well, just in case anyone uh, wants to know. I actually, so Jessica's asked another question, but I actually have a question um, that I'm just gonna sneak in ahead. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned Google Search Console. Yep. How can we use Google Search Console as part of our SEO strategy? Because that is basically telling us what people are searching for when they're coming to our site. Absolutely. So yeah, if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so Google Search Console actually gives you two very important SEO metrics, which are, sorry, excuse me, um, the performance of your site from a technical perspective. So what's, what errors is your site currently getting that you may not be aware of if you're not very technically sound, okay? Um, and then normally they even give you recommendations on what you should be doing to, to take care of those, of those errors, okay? If you don't have a developer in your hand. And then they also, as you were rightly pointing out right now, they also give you a list of all the keywords uh, people are using to come up to your uh, to to find your site essentially. Okay. Now those uh, keywords are very important because in your mind you may be thinking, oh, um, I don't know. Let's carry on using the example of Black Air Forces. Okay. You may be thinking, oh, Black Air Force, Black Air Forces is my 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 biggest product, my money generator, or, or exactly what I want the public to be coming to my site for. However, 
if you then go on Google Search Console and all of a sudden you see that white Air Force is actually is, is exactly what's driving the most amount of traffic to your site, then perhaps then that almost answers your question of um, your your main goal should be improving uh, the keywords white Air Forces as well as black Air Forces rather than you just focusing on one term that perhaps is not driving as much traffic to your site. So Google Search Console is very good at not only using the performance of your site, so how many clicks are you getting on, on almost uh, every two days or so, I believe the rankings show up on Google Search Console. However, they are also really good at showcasing those keywords, the most popular pages for you, as well as uh, the technical errors that your site currently has, okay? Amazing. Um, so Jessica says, um, you mentioned 800 pounds to 1K a month for SEOs. Yeah. Will it affect your SEOs if you stop and start? For example, how do your SEOs get old and are they updated through current trends? So it's, it's an interesting question. Um, look, as, as I think I mentioned it throughout the presentation as well, um, SEO is supposed to be a long-term strategy. OK, if um, you going back to the trends and like almost seasonality um, sort of practices, if if you only want to invest in uh, your website from a marketing perspective on a seasonality basis, then perhaps PPC is more appropriate for you. OK, because obviously PPC is, is campaign based on a campaign basis. So it's completely up to you how much you decide to pay for it. And um how much you um like how for how long you want to be running that campaign for when it comes to seo as i've mentioned before sometimes the results may not come for six nine in some instances if you if you have a car insurance business for example one of the most competitive markets in in in, in the world really when it comes to to seo you may not see results for 12 18 months you know so stop starting it will not bring you any any benefits OK, however, if you are in a very small niche and you've been doing SEO for, say, three, four months and you start seeing great results. Um, however, let's just say that for some uh, reason you can't afford to carry on paying what you've committed to pay, then perhaps stop it because you've already got the results that you were looking for. And now you're perhaps thinking of different ways to bring in a, a better budget to then reinvest in SEO. However, if you ever do go into SEO, I would suggest you go with, at the very minimum, that 12-month mentality, okay? It should be a 12-month uh, practice at the very minimum. And um, yeah, I would I would certainly not stop start the campaign. Can I just ask, so I'm just asking another question Absolutely. in there. How would you know, given that it's a long-term strategy, how would you know if it wasn't working and if you it, weren't doing the right things? So... At the end of the day, every SEO knows the, the parameters you need to be following, okay? And as I was saying, um, you met, like for one of the examples I showed in the case study, the first three months, four months in some industries, you may not see anything moving, okay? And that's when the real questions start coming in. However, as I was saying with the example of Google Search Console, you do get told almost what is going wrong with your site, okay? Now... There are a variety of different uh, things that you can do to follow Google's parameters on getting rankings. There's there's an answer for everything. There's a reason why you may not be getting traffic right now, okay? Especially when looking at your competitors. SEO is actually a, a practice where you have to keep a close eye on your, com on your competition at all times. Because at the end of the day, there's only 10 positions in the first page of Google, okay? And in some industries, there's thousands, if not millions of businesses trying to compete for those top 10 positions, okay? So there's always almost a benchmark for you to follow on what is it that they're doing that we are not doing and what is it that we should be doing to ensure that we are able to compete for those positions with them, okay? So it's almost like there's always an answer out there and as any SEO professional will tell you, as long as you're following the parameters, you will be able to is eventually get the rankings that you're looking for. It may take time sometimes. Uh, Shana says, thank you for the alt text. In regards to the original name of the image, does that have any weight to the ranking as well? It's a good question. What do we mean by the original name of the image? So the name, so when you save it, 
Yep. So you might save it as Black Air Forces and then yep. you upload it. Does that does that mean anything or Google doesn't know what you've saved it as? It, it does. So so as I was saying, like what Google reads is the back end, right? So it's almost like the code of the site. So the moment that you put in Black Air Forces under the uh, as the image description, that's what Google is now reading. So now they know that within this page, there are Black Air Forces being sold. Okay, so it, what was the question again? Just about the, the file name and whether okay. it's worth kind of going through all the photos that you've got and making sure that the, the file name is the same as the alt text. Right? Abs absolutely, absolutely. It's sometimes it's a very hard task, okay? Because we do have, for example, clients that when they came to us, they had about 14,000 images on their <laughs> site without without a null text. Uh, so you, you can imagine what my content team were thinking, would be thinking when they see things like that. Um, but as I was saying, if you can't handle 14,000, it's completely normal. You know, it's a very daunting task. Focus on your real money generators. Okay. Focus on those products that, you know, will drive, uh, good revenue to your business. And perhaps instead of 14,000, you have about a hundred that are real money generators. Okay. So focus on those a hundred and then slowly, but surely start uh, focusing on 100 perhaps every month. Every month I'm going to be focusing on optimizing the the, the description of every image uh, of 100 images a month. And then slowly you, you, you'll start tackling the most important ones. Amazing. Uh, Shana also wants to know, what is the best site to check backlinks? Oh, that's a really good question. That is a really good question. And as a matter of fact, I, as I was saying, I prepared a document for everyone. Um, I'm not sure if Noemi has given it to you, Kalia, yet. But if not, I'm sure she'll be sending it to you after this call so that you can send it to everyone else. Um, there are a variety of different sites. It, it very much depends. If you do have uh, uh, like a budget that you can uh, afford for it, I would suggest something like Ahrefs, OK? Uh, I can put it on the chat for everyone to see, Ahrefs, right there. Um, or something like SEMrush. The SEMrush packing profile is a little bit less uh, efficient, to, to, to put it lightly. Uh, I would certainly use Ahrefs. With Ahrefs, Ahrefs is great because you can not only look at your backlink profile, you can also go and see what competitors in your industry, uh, where competitors in your industry are getting backlinks from. Because then that gives you almost a, a little bit of an advantage because you know if, for example, the Times wrote about one of your competitors, you can go and read the article and think, hmm, I can go and create an article like this that's even better because perhaps I have more experience and more expertise than this person. So go and create a similar article. And then within the article, you, you even get the name of the journalist. So you can even reach out to that journalist and, and see if they would be happy to, to get a comment from you, for example. So that's normally how uh, uh, companies go about creating their backlinks. Um, I've got a, a, another question that I'm going to yeah. slot in. So, you know, a lot of us in here, we all know each other quite well. Yep. What if we said to each other, right, guys, let's all backlink to each other's sites. Let's kind of, you know, create like a little a community where I'm going to backlink to Thea's site and Thea's going to backlink to Shani's and Shani's going to backlink to Patrick. Is that a hack? Is that smart? Or is that something which is just like, mm, no, it's a bit of a waste of time? I mean, you could do it, you know, especially if everyone here wants a little secret. Jami have a very powerful uh, domain authority, okay? <laughs> so if you can get a backing from them, I congratulate you because they do have <laughs> a strong domain authority. Um, however, the reason why it wouldn't perhaps be as efficient is because Firstly, as I was just mentioning with Jami, domain authority is very important. So it's very important for you to identify what your domain authority is. There's, you can go on, you can type on your Google search right now, Moz DA Checker. So I may put down the chat as well, Moz DA Checker. And then uh, you go into it, introduce your domain, and you'll see what your domain authority is. Now, if someone like Jami, for example, that has a, a, a high um, domain authority gets a lot of links from sites with a low domain authority that would certainly affect their performance, okay? However, another thing that is also very important to know is that 
Google normally appreciates more backlinks that come from people within your industry. Okay, so for example, if um, us as Viaduct Generation, an SEO agency, were to get a backlink in the NHS, the NHS, as you can expect, have a very strong domain authority as well. If we were to get a backlink in the NHS, like Google would look at it and be like, okay, but it doesn't have any correlation. So it's almost like they can see the hack. Don't forget that Google is, what is it, the fifth, sixth biggest commercial brand in the world, you know? They have, like, trust me, I worked there for two and a half years. They, they have some of the most intelligent people as well as some of the most intelligent machines you'll ever see. So they know when something weird is going on. And you also need to be very careful with purchasing backlinks, and that's, that's the topic of discussion. Because if you go on sites like Fiverr, for example, you see a lot of adverts there saying things like, oh, pay me $200 for a thousand backlinks and go to the number one position in Google. Again, if you have had zero backlinks in the period over the period of, um, I don't know, two, three years, and then now all of a sudden in one day you get a thousand backlinks and the following day you get zero backlinks all over again, that Google will know that and they will know that you paid for backlinks, okay? And the moment that that happens, your site will get blacklisted, penalized, and that will have a direct impact in your traffic for a good number of years, okay? So never purchase backlinks unless you, say you collaborate with a blogger, for example, okay? And you do, and they have, this blogger have, have a blog and that blog is very popular, okay? With a high domain authority. And you decide to pay them, just ensure that you ask them for a sponsored link. So there's three types of backlinks. There's sponsored backlinks, which you pay for. And as long as when they're creating the backlink, they, they say that this is a sponsored link, everything is fine. There's follow back, backlinks, which are the backlinks that essentially, when you say follow, you're essentially telling the Google crawler bots, hey, please recognize this backlink and give me some domain authority points, okay? And then there's no follow backlinks. Now the no follow backlinks you normally get from you normally get organically from newspapers. Say, uh, let's just carry on using the example of Jami. Jami are doing great things for the black community right now, and they have been doing so for the, for a good number of years. Uh, and say they, they've had an interview with um, the BBC, for example, and the BBC have written an amazing article about them. Uh, and then Sky News, for example, decides to pick up on it. They normally would just call this a no-follow uh, link. However, in a lot of instances, if you get no-follow links from super popular news outlets, for example, it's okay. Because at the end of the day, you're still getting brand awareness from it. Because it's some, if you get a bad thing from Sky News, for example, you can probably tell how much impact that would have on, on, on your site, right? So don't get too obsessed with getting follow links, okay? However, that should sort of be the goal. You should have a little bit of a balance, a little bit of follow links, a little bit of no follow links. If they are from very strong domain authoritative pages, and then sponsored links if you ever do co collaborate with some sort of influencer in your industry. Amazing. Thank you. Patrick wants to know, is there a guide or best practice and examples for on-page SEO? Very good question. Again, we, uh, I've, I've got a document I'm more than happy to share with you guys with it. Um, but I mean, look, when it comes to SEO, there's actually a lot of information online. Okay. Uh, the moment you type in best on page SEO practices, for example, you will get good results and you just need to find something that is suitable for your business. Because if you have a service-based ba business, whatever on-page SEO you're doing won't be the same practice that you would use if you had uh, an e-commerce business, for example, okay? So it's very important that you specify your search. Google is very intelligent nowadays, right? So we've gone from just typing random keywords on Google to now asking Google questions. What is the best restaurant in London, for example? So type that in. What is the best SEO, um, I, what is the best on-page SEO practice for, I don't know what sort of business you have, Patrick, but for whatever business you have, okay? And once again, um, if you do have any sort of questions or anything I can help you out with, do feel free to send me an email I'm sure we'll be able to find some time for us to go over it together. 
Amazing. Uh, Peace wants to know, is it hard or harder to rank first page in a different country, even if they're also an English speaking country? That's an amazing question. Um, <laughs> sorry, again, I was going to say it depends, but because <laughs> it does depend. OK, um, look, if let's let's just say the US and the UK, for example, OK, two English speaking countries. Um, cover two very different markets, okay? So say in the US you get, let's just put it as an example, the New York Times speaks about you. Uh, this UK brand, uh, I don't know, revolutionizing the, U the US market, just to put it as an example. And you are completely out of the UK, okay? Now that mention in the New York Times, for example, will, drive loads of traffic from the US market, okay? However, it's if your intention is to rank in both markets, okay, then it becomes a little a little bit more complex because um, the way, oof, this, this is going to be a very sticky one. Okay, let me try and keep it as simple as possible. So the way search engines work, as you know, we've got google.co.uk here, for example, okay? or you go google.es in Spain, for example, okay? Um, you need to almost optimize with that in mind. So now, for example, if you were to, to do the US and the UK, because they're both English speaking countries, it actually becomes a little bit easier to do. And all you have to do is, if you want to focus more on one market than the other, ensure that you get those backlinks from that country. Now, if you ever, I know that wasn't the question, but if you ever do want to rank for countries that are not English speaking countries, for example, then as you probably can are able to tell, you need to create a page or a, a version of your site in that language. I'm sure you've been in sites where you see the, the, the language sort of variant on the top right hand side of the screen where it says you wanna go, um, or even if you go to nike.com a lot of times, it asks you what market do you, do you want to search from? And then you have to select the, the UK, and then um, or, or you have to select English, then the UK, and then it, it, it sends you to their site. If you were to do Spain, for example, you would do, you do the same thing, right? You, you have to be Spanish, Spain, instead of a country like Mexico, for example, that also speaks Spanish, and then it will send you to the Spanish market site, for example, okay? So it becomes a little bit more complex if you ever do want to change languages, but if it's the same language, then it's the same thing. Perfect. Uh, Shana says, if we were to do this ourselves, how much time should we dedicate per week to have, a, you know, a good impact? Um, again, it depends. It depends on the size of your site. OK, <laughs> um, because, for example, if, if I was to use it as an example for, for my clients, um, the most successful clients, we essentially dedicate about 15 to 20 hours for them a week, okay? And that's that's a lot of hours, you know? Um, if you have a small site, then it's a little bit less hours. It very much depends on how much work your site requires. If you barely have any content, then you have to focus a lot of time on creating that content for your site. If your site has a messy, a messy technical backend, then not only will you have to to learn a little bit of web development tactics, you will also then have to apply those tactics onto your site. So again, it, it very much depends on on the needs of your website. And I know it's a little bit of a of a vague question, but it, it's almost impossible for me to to be able to tell you without seeing what the site is like. Because again, it just depends on your needs. If you have loads of content and the site is covered in blogs. Like I have a client that when they came to us, they had over 50 pages of blogs. Hey, it's almost pointless for us to focus on creating any content for you. However, they had a lot of technical issues on the site. So all our energies were focused on technical aspects of the site. You know, so it very much depends. Just a, a question on blogs, actually. Like, yeah. is it worthwhile? Because, for instance, like Jamie has a lot of blogs, which, because mm -hmm. um, obviously we've got products for all different seasons, like we update our blogs um, you know, for Valentine's Day, for Mother's Day, you know, does that help with SEO, just keeping existing content just a bit refreshed? Absolutely. That's called um, evergreen content. Okay. So 
one trillion percent is one of the best aspects of SEO, as a matter of fact. Google loves to see a site that on a yearly basis they keep a close they are responsible enough to update the content on their site from the previous years. Okay, so for example, if you if you ever have, as we we're saying, a, a Valentine's Day uh, gifts, for example, for 2021, um, and now it gets to 2022, and in January you're already uh, updating it. Google sees that, and they see that this page has uh, has existed for since 2021. However, now in 2022 you're updating it again. They love that, you know. So absolutely, it's very, 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 very good, and a very good practice to have evergreen content on your site. Perfect. Um, Blanks and Jewelry, Jessica wants to know what's a good domain authority number? Because she's got a score on Moz, but she's not sure yet how to interpret it. Now, anything above, I would say 35 is a good domain authority. Okay. Now, if you normally would struggle to get to the 90s because the 90s is your website has to have existed for a lot of years. We're talking 10, 15 years. Uh, you have to have had a lot of backlinks linking to your site and your site is very popular. So we're talking, you know, pro you probably know what site I'm talking about, the Amazons of the world, the Nikes of the world and Disney's, British Airways, all these sort of sites have a very strong domain authority. Um, however, anything below 35, Again, don't be too harsh on yourselves, okay? Because if your site if your site has only existed for about two years and you've never really focused on link building, or or you've never really focused on creating content for your site, it's normal for you to have a low domain authority, okay? All, all you have to do now is just focus on increasing that, okay? Using the different sort of practices I've, I've mentioned in this conversation. So yeah, don't be too harsh on yourselves, okay? make sure that if you have a business and you know that you're a, a, an expert okay make sure you share those expertise that's what i will say and keep it consistent be consistent with it okay just like uh kalia was just mentioning with uh, uh with the evergreen content that we we're just talking about right like have that calendar set up the hey i have to remember that by the 14th of january i have to update my valentine's post for uh, ahead of the 14th of february if Christmas is on the 25th and you have the best gifts for Christmas 2022, ensure that by the 1st of November, for example, you've already updated your Christmas page. Be consistent with it. When it comes to blogs, okay, if Google want, uh, were to get the best, uh, were to get exactly what they wish they could, they wish every website created a blog almost every day. Okay, I actually, as a matter of fact, I even have someone that sent, I'm part of a newsletter for uh, paid social campaigns because we don't know for paid social internally. So sometimes I like to advise my clients on different tactics they could be using for the for the social media accounts, for the paid ads. Um, and he, they send me almost an email every two days with different sort of blogs that they've written. That's very good because that's you're pumping loads and loads and loads and lots of content. And Google loves it. See, look at Google as an egocentric platform. They love the attention. They love the fact that whatever website is being hosted on their platform, your, so your website is getting the attention uh, required. Okay. So when it comes to blogs, if you don't have the time for every two days, it's completely normal. But at least once a week, hey, put aside two hours, write a quick content, uh, write a quick uh, blog and put it up. Don't be afraid. Amazing. Thea wants to know, does Google only analyze published site pages or are backend remnants also scanned? So I suppose like draft posts, draft products, things oh, like that. No, 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 no. Um, the moment you, you, you click that publish button, that's the moment Google, as long as that page is marked as an indexable page, um, that's the moment Google starts reading the data in, in that website mm -hmm. okay uh if it's just in the back end as a draft uh, yeah there's nothing for you to worry about amazing guys if you've got any more questions please do get them in because we're coming to the final minutes um i just wanted to ask another question just it's kind of like a more of a kind of conclusion question because you've answered this in a lot of different ways already it's just about how google thinks and what Google really wants to see. Because ultimately, the whole point of Google is to give the searcher, the, the potential customer, what they want to see. 
So just a bit of kind of like insight into like how Google is thinking about or the, the algorithm, sorry, is thinking about websites would be super useful. OK, so there's a lot. I like to, to use this example a lot. So so look at Google as almost like um, four phases, four or five phases. OK. Um, number one, web development. OK, so how has this what is the coding of the site like? Have you used too much code, too much Java, JavaScript, too much CSS, for example? Is the site too heavy that is taking the user too long to, to interact with it? OK, as we know, as millennials, we don't really have too much patience. Eh? So so we like quick things. We like to get to the site quickly. You know, so the moment that is like two seconds too slow, we go back, find another site. OK, so web development, very important. Almost nothing to do with SEO. Web development and SEO is almost like they are cousins. OK, however, web developers and technical SEOs, we like to fight a lot with each other. OK, so web development, number one. Um, ensure that your site is tech is built properly. Number two, technical SEO. Ensure that your URLs are done correctly, okay? Because it's very important. If this is always a hard, um, let me just, can I, can I just share my screen and do a quick yeah, example? You should be able to, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to go on ASOS quickly um, because ASOS have very good SEO. Okay, okay, let me just go. Okay, so this ASOS already recognizes that it's me coming back. Okay, it's going to do it all the time. Um, now, if you go to ASOS.com, okay, you're now on the home page. Okay, the moment that I click on jeans, for example, okay, notice the path. So the Google, uh, uh, ASOS is essentially telling me that, hey, your path has been, you've gone from the home page, you've you've selected men and then you've gone to jeans okay that path is very important because if there's a lot of times where uh the url suddenly changes with sites that haven't been built correctly you know i can click on almost anything and the path will always be the same right so it's almost like now i'm, I'm in sportswear right so it's like asos men not quite sure why all of a sudden i'm getting women's so that's a little bit poor on their end uh, on asos however you get what i mean right so i'm now on asos i've gone to men and then all of a sudden i've gone to sportswear okay so the path is very important for technical seo another very important thing for uh, technical seo is the internal linking structure okay so how well are you linking every page of the site now there's something about uh, websites that is very important for you to remember, and I'm glad I just remembered to say that. It shouldn't take the user more than three clicks to access every uh, page of your site. If you think about it, right now, this is why navigation bars are very important. Right now, I still haven't clicked anything, and all of a sudden, I can see everything that ASOS has to offer from a uh, clothing perspective. Right. So now I could go to trousers and chinos, for example, and this is the first time I've clicked on anything on the site. So that's one click. OK, so now I can access all these products and then load more, you know, without uh, without it taking me four, five, six, seven, eight, nine clicks for me to access the majority of their products. OK, so navigation bars are very important, internal linking structure. That's why. That's another very important access of, uh, uh, aspect of SEO, okay? Then I'm gonna stop sharing now and come back to you guys. Then content, of course. So we've just gone web development, technical SEO, content, okay? Content is all about the blogs on your site, the on your homepage, how well do you explain what your site is all about, okay? If you go to a website, say you're looking for I don't know, uh, an estate agency software, if you're an estate agent and you go to a site and all of a sudden you don't really see anything to do with the software, it doesn't explain it very well, you you find yourself wondering what this company is all about, then uh, the, the content on that site is very poor because it's not giving the user the exactly what they're looking for, you know? So ensuring that every page on your website has a little bit of a summary or an explanation of what the page is all about, very important, as well as those blogs that we've been talking about so much today. 
And then finally, what we've been talking about, the icing on the cake, as my co-founder likes to call it, um, backlinks, the PR, the, the, the cool sort of aspect, the reaching out to influencers and working alongside them, the reaching out to journalists saying, hey, I've conducted this study and I've come to realize X, Y, and Z, and, and almost getting them to speak about you, you know? That, those are the four most important aspects of SEO. I hope that made sense. I went through a lot of different things there. It made a lot of sense. Thank you so much. Um, I think that is like the perfect um, point to end on as well, just kind of to, to round everything up. I just want to say a huge thank you to Fabio and Viaduct Generation and Noemi, who is um, in the background, who did a lot of the organization for this workshop as well. Thank you so, so much um, for coming here, for spending the last hour and um, giving us so much information. I'm sure a lot of people have made a lot of notes um because yeah this has just been really really informative um and really insightful guys i'm going to drop in a feedback link in the chat please it takes like 60 seconds just to let us know what you thought what you loved what you learned if there's anything you think we could improve for next time please 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 do uh just take literally 60 seconds to fill that out thank you so much everyone for joining us as Fabio mentioned, I will be sharing the slides um, and a few additional pieces of information with you over the next couple of days. Um, but I did also put his email address in. I will even recopy that actually, just uh, so you have it. It's Fabio at viaductgen.com. If you want to get in touch with him about anything, you want to find out anything more, um, it's, I've just reposted it in there for you. Um, yeah. And also, of course, this session was recorded, so we'll get that over to you as well. Um, if you want to watch any of it back or re-listen to any of, uh, Fabio's answers, but again, thank you. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, Noemi. Thank you yeah. everyone who's joined us here today. Um, I hope everyone has an incredible evening. No, thank you, Kalia, for hosting this. It's been great. Everyone's been, and the style was really nice and, and, and Chirpsy, so it was, it was a nice reception. Okay. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for organizing it. Once again, thank you, Noemi, for all the work that you've done in the background. And yeah, hope everyone enjoyed it. Perfect. See you later. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.